One Piece Chapter 821 Review. Okay, so not much happened in this chapter, but the things that did happen were awesome. And for those that don't know, this chapter started the One Piece arc known as, or saga as I like to think it will end up being, known as Versus the Four Emperors. Meaning we're probably going to get to see all the emperors in this arc, which is awesome. Maybe we'll get a big mom full design, maybe. At long last, we'll see what he looks like, I hope, but whatever. Alright, so what I want to talk about here is, first of all, I do want to talk about the cover page quickly. The cover page for this uh, chapter is great. I really like it. It's done in a very pr traditional Japanese style. It has Luffy in Gear 4 looking just like Raido when he was introduced, but doing his Gear 4 pose. It's really cool, really good stuff. Oh, like, Nami, like, I will say, though, like, Nami, I could not tell that was Nami. But only thing that made me know that was Nami with the orange hair, because it's not a different style than Oda's. Honestly, I had trouble believing Oda drew this. But I believe, but it says his name on the top and translated, it says Oda Ishida, or Ishida Oda. So I'll just go where he did draw it. But, this was a very good chapter. So we found out that indeed the voice Lucy was hearing in the previous chapter was indeed the voice of Junisha or Zo. Now, Luffy, this is odd. Luffy talked about it and he keeps on saying, like, he's covering his ears. He, he, not, he appeared to be in pain, and not even in pain, but he just has to, like, it's, like, hurting his head a bit. And he brings it up. He's like, can't you guys hear that? What the hell is that? And... I think it's Nami who eventually said, Luffy, we don't hear nobody talking. Well, obviously besides her at the moment, but you know what I mean. So you pretty much tell Luffy, there's no one speaking. Like, you're hearing things. And then, uh, I think it, it, it's either Inarashi or Nekamamushi. I forgot which. I always get the two confused. I know, I'm bad at that. But, points out that Goldie Roger had this ability to hear this vo the voices of things as well, and by this he's referring to the voice of all things that Rayleigh talked about back at the Bodhi and the voice, and that is how Luffy was able to communicate with the Sea King when he was uh, fighting Hody Jones in Fifth Man Island. However, this was a pretty big reveal. Apparently, Odin, Odin, yeah, had the ability as well. So Odin could also hear hear the voice of all things. I thought that was very interesting. However, strangely, unlike with the Sea King, Luffy is unable to communicate with Junisha. Or though. Only Momo is. And Luffy brings this up because they realize Momo can also hear him. And Luffy's like, you may be the only one that can talk to him. So though it pretty much or Junisha it go is pretty much telling him you have to help me. Like, you have to command me. Uh, as if he's some kind of weapon. I think Sawyer 7 May talked about this. It was, it was his theory. It may not be his theory, but he talked about it in his review that he could have been like a rejected ancient weapon. Because he needs to be commanded to fight. Apparently, it was like a punishment. Like, Zunisha did something like a thousand years ago, and he's not really allowed to do anything anymore. So, he pretty much asked. He's like, asking Momo, you need to command me. Luffy tells him you're the only one that can do it, and then Momo tells him, he tells Dunisha to attack Jack, and because Jack is the one obviously who attacked the island, or Dunisha I mean, so I forget though is in an island, but he tells him to, and this is, I don't think Jack is dead, but mind you, he's a Delaford user, and, his, and the ship, Dunisha turns around, like, he, he was actually falling down. He just stood up. And just, like, screwed Jack over. Knocked him onto the ground. Destroyed his ship. It was amazing. It was a really badass paddle. In fact, if you look at my thumbnail, that's the biggest paddle I picked in it. It's the really big one. That's it. Really cool one. But, another thing I do want to talk about that happened in this chapter is, uh, thanks to Junisha, Momo was the one who figured out who was attacking though. He figured out that it was him, because he was the one that revealed it's Jack. The men were actually about to intervene, but then Junisha handled it at Momo command. Which was, which was freaking amazing. I mean, it was great. Really good stuff. 
I don't think Jack is dead. I really don't. But I will admit, I don't know what's going on with Luffy, but it's really annoying. Because, so every chapter, literally every chapter since the thing with since Luffy decided to go stay Sanji, which, I'll check, but I think that was like, 8.17, 8, 8.18, it was like 8.16, I think, when he decided to go stay Sanji, when he was like, came up with their plan, and I'll look that up later, and maybe I'll post that in the comments, but ever since then, Luffy will stay, he going to go stay Sanji, and then something will distract him. This is the year of Sanji, and we're not getting a lot of it. Like, we got like a couple of awesome, really good Sanji chapters, but now we're getting all of this, so I don't really know what's going on with that. It's really odd, but who the hell knows. But something very interesting from this chapter is that before Luffy leaves, he asks for food. Now, but the, the reason I ask, I think it's just weird, is because Luffy said Luffy has started getting ready to leave multiple times. Because, like, let's say last chapter, last chapter, uh, Luffy was about to leave. Nami grabs him. It was like. Uh, I feel responsible, I'm going. Chopper was like, well, Pekka needed a doctor, so I'm going to go. So Nami, Chopper, and Luffy decide all three of them will go, along with Pekka being there as well. And the annoying thing is that in this chapter, they get distracted again. So what I believe will happen is, if on some slim chance Jack gets up from that, and in time, I believe someone will distract Jack, and maybe Law or Zoro. Come on, we need to get Zoro versus Jack. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. But let's all be honest, Zoro's first real challenge has to be in Wano Kuri. But the point is that I feel like something going to need to distract Jack for long enough to Luffy to get for Luffy to get out of there. Because at this point it's getting ridiculous. Now, the chapter but the ending to this chapter. The ending to this chapter it was, some people are hyped about it, I'm not, because honestly, I don't give a single crap about a poo. I don't like a poo, I think his ability is lame. I mean, who knows, maybe he'll, maybe he'll end up being a complete ultimate badass, like more badass than Zoro for all we know. But I personally just don't like him. I, I just don't. So yeah, I'm going to point that out, but because at the end of the chapter, the one that informed Kaido that they have lost com communication with uh, Jack and his men is clearly a poo, because you look at the Den Den Mushi, it has like piano-like teeth. And the only character to have piano teeth so far in the series is Apu. Now, a couple pretty cool things I want to point out about this chapter. The first one is on the first page. Like, these are just little cool arts. The things I noticed is that when all the pe when they're all being like forced to fall or what fall down, uh, Law and Zoro are just standing. Zoro looks like he's holding on to something. You can't see it because of the space bubble for Usopp. But he clearly had his arm on something. And it actually kind of looks like Zoro is using the space bubble from Usopp to like stop it though from falling, which is really cool. Law is literally just just standing there, unaffected. Because they're just too awesome. Momonosuke is holding on to what I think is Kinemo, but but it, the cool thing about this is the, is Nami and is especially Nami being it's funnier because of her size. But Nami is actually grabbing onto Luffy's head and it's Dress complete, his neck is dressed completely backward, and it appears Chopper doing it as well. But I would assume the, the reason Luffy looks like he's in some pain is not Chopper. I'm assuming it's Nami because I like to believe Nami weighs more than Chopper does in his in the in the form he's in at the moment. I mean, in his you know normal form that he walked around in. If he was in like heavy point, of course he'd weigh more than Nami, but currently, if look at the size difference, the one that's pulling the mower would be obviously be Nami. But I thought that's something pretty cool. Uh, another thing I thought was really, really cool is uh, it's really all the little things they had, like, it's a uh, Jack in this chapter, it's like complete beast. Uh, I'm, going, I'm actually bringing up the quote right now. Give me a second. Okay, here it is. That's it. If we force it to its knee, we can get near its head, and we can finish it off however we like. Gorge out its eyes or cut off its tongue. Excellent. Rip through its belly from the inside out. All very interesting things. But the reason I'm reading you this is, one, because this is just proving how much of a boss Jack is. 
But if you look at this panel, look at the pro look at the guy, the guy on the left there. Look at him. Doesn't that guy look like Whitebeard Division Commander to go by the name of Edo? Or Edo? Yeah, his name is the cross dressing. Uh, I think he's the cross dressing guy from Whitebeard Crew. I think he's the Division Commander. I think he's the fourth. I don't know what division. I don't know what division he commanded. Sorry about that. But he looks like that guy. I actually should may have a. Uh, I'll post a picture comparing them at the end of the video. But they look a lot alike. It looks like he. But one of Whitebeard's former commander may have joined Jack and Kaido, which is very interesting. And as I was talking earlier about a poo, because of the ending to the chapter, we now have confirmation that a poo is working with Kaido now. A poo was with Kid. It was Kid, a poo, it was Kid, a poo, and Hawkins. They were the ones that were there when Kaido attacked. So this, this one, this unfortunately puts an end to all of our jokes about how screwed Kid is. Now we can't talk about how Kid is dead anymore. I never meant it. I would joke about it like, oh, Kid is dead. If he tried to fight Kaido, he's dead. I knew he wasn't dead, but you know what I mean. But due to this, we now have confirmation that it appears Kaido did something. It was either Kid or Kaido or one of one of somebody there. Anybody was there really could have done this. Maybe it was Killer. Maybe it was Killer. Brought to be a dead something like Kaido will join you. Just don't kill us. Or maybe they were like we're on a way to kill Red Hair Shane. And Kaido was like oh killing Red Hair that'd be awesome. And you guys can come with me. Let's team up. Uh, you guys seem pretty decently powerful. Nowhere near my level of course. But whatever, but this is really good. Uh, I wanted to talk about how that would confirm that they were all alive and now working with Kaido. But if I had to rate this chapter, I would give it a... You know what? I, it, it, I can't think of anything that would wrong with it. So yeah, 10 out of 10. The 10 out of 10. It was an amazing chapter, but art was on point. The story was great. It had some decent comedy moments. Even, even if they were just hitting in the background, it progressed the story. I really hope we leave though. I really hope we leave though soon and get on to the other Yoko stuff. But this could be a central start of the Versus Four Emperor's arc, or as I will be calling it, the Versus Four Yoko arc. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, above all else, have a great day. Follow me on Twitter, all of that, and tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below.